crew was confronted uh, with a situation that had never occurred before. There is no failed jack screw procedure in the quick reference handbooks that they have available. There is no training for it. When the jack screw jammed, the pilots were unable to adjust the stabilizer. We felt that it was due to the fact that these nut threads had worn away and it was just too hard for that jack screw under the power of the electric motor to turn. That gave the flight crew an indication that there was a problem. The crew knew they had a problem in the tailplane, but they had no idea what. Two motors controlled the jack screw, and they tried each of them in turn. But the pilots' attempts to free the jam stabilizer made their situation worse. We're at 23-7. Request. Yeah, we got it under control here. No, we don't. Where they went wrong was that they wanted to try both the alternate and the primary trim motors at the same time. When the pilot switched both the electric motors on, the jack screw moved, but the threads had given way, and the jack screw was now held only by a single retaining nut. From this point on, the plane was doomed. That end nut was never designed to hold the loads generated aerodynamically by the airplane. Let's get speed brakes. Give me high pressure pumps. Okay. Now we know, back. in the glaring light of hindsight, now when we turn the situation around in time and look back, we can see that this air crew and no air crew should have ever been fooling with the trim and trying to run it back and forth. The retaining nut grew weaker and weaker. Then, finally, through the loads beating down on that nut, the nut finally failed. Feel that? Yep. Okay, give me slacks. The jack screw slid completely out of the Acme nut, allowing the horizontal stabilizer to move well beyond its aerodynamic limits. This is a bitch. Is it? Yeah. The stabilizer forced the plane down and now completely out of control, it rolled over into its final dive. Okay, let's get rudder. Slap rudder, slap rudder. I can't reach it. This crew was working to recover the aircraft right down to the water. I mean, they did not give up the whole way down through the descent. clear to the investigators that the failure of the jack screw was the only explanation for the plane's erratic flight path and final dive. But why had this happened? Why had the jack screw failed? The investigators began looking deeper and deeper into the condition of the faulty jack screw on Alaska Airlines Flight 261. What had caused it to fail? There was no lubrication or visible grease uh, on the working area of the screw. That was uh, surprising and strange. The discovery of no grease on the jack screw alarmed the investigators. They alerted the Federal Aviation Administration, who ordered an immediate check on all MD-80s in the USA. They made a shocking discovery. At Alaska Airlines, in six of its fleet of 34 planes, the jack screw assembly needed to be replaced after failing new inspections. No grease is the culprit. No grease or inadequate grease is the only thing that can give you that wear rate. A simple lack of grease led to the failure of the jack screw and the loss of 88 lives. But why did this happen at Alaska Airlines? 
the investigators' attention now switched to the company's maintenance program. What emerged was deeply worrying. We interviewed all the mechanics who had worked on these airplanes. We knew that they had been falsifying records or not doing the work they had indicated. The mechanics at Alaska indicated that they were pressured to keep the planes in the air, or that their recommendations were overruled by supervisors. Some alleged that records were altered to show work done that was not done. Alaska has long been one of America's most successful airlines. But in the early 1990s, the economic downturn began to hit the company hard. Its response was to slash costs to revive its fortunes. Alaska Airlines began flying the planes more intensively. It sharply increased the average daily use of its fleet. Keeping the planes in the air earning money put maintenance schedules under pressure. John Leotine was a lead mechanic at Alaska Airlines Oakland maintenance facility, where he worked for over eight years. Leotine felt that the new pressures on maintenance put passengers' lives at risk. He was to pay dearly for expressing those concerns. We have used an actor to portray his experiences based on his sworn evidence to the NTSB. Leotine claimed that planes were pushed back into service too quickly. Sometimes, rather than wait for a replacement part or repair, supervisors passed planes fit for service, free to carry passengers up into the air. In October 1998, over 15 months before the crash, John Leotine became so worried that he did something that would change his life forever. He reported Alaska Airlines to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, alleging violations in maintenance procedures. There were very few voices at Alaska who had concerns about the maintenance. There should have been more and there should have been people listening. John Leotine is a hero in my book. In December 1999, over a year before the crash, the FAA and Department of Transportation officials moved on Alaska Airlines. The case was referred to federal prosecutors, and the FBI raided Alaska's maintenance facilities and seized thousands of records. The raid was the opening shot in a federal grand jury investigation, which would last three years. No criminal charges were brought against the company. Alaska Airlines officials denied that any unsafe planes were put into service or that passengers' lives were ever at risk. But the investigation revealed hundreds of violations of federal regulations. Alaska Airlines was fined. The FAA insisted on changes to the company's maintenance and safety procedures. The FAA also suspended two supervisors for falsifying records. Like other whistleblowers, John Leotine would pay heavily for his efforts to save lives. Alaska Airlines put him on paid leave from his job, costing him thousands of dollars in regular overtime earnings. Then, in January 2000, John Leotine saw his worst nightmare come true. The kind of accident he had tried to prevent by contacting the federal authorities now took place just off the California coast. After the crash of Flight 261, mechanic John Leotine went back to his own work records. 
Incredibly, he found that he had a direct link to the crashed airliner. Over two years before, at the plane's last overhaul, he had ordered the jack screw on this particular aircraft be replaced. He then went off shift. When investigators examined the record, they found that Leotine's recommendation had been overruled by the next shift and the plane put back into service. It would be two and a half years before the next overhaul. But time ran out. Two months before the overhaul was due, Flight 261 crashed. Alaska Airlines labeled Leotine a disruptive influence. Later, he sued the company for libel. Alaska settled. But Leotine could no longer work in the industry he loved. I get calls almost every week of somebody saying, should I blow the whistle? And I always tell them, you need to know, you need to be prepared to find another line of work because you will not work in the industry and you will not work in the government. 